Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, drummer for Pink, Madonna, Janet Jackson, and countless others, Brian Fraser Moore. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, friends out in podcast land? Yep, your watch, your iPhone, your clock is correct. It's that time. It's another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show coming to you from Music City, USA today. And Sonny, our guest from sunny Los Angeles. Jim, what is happening, man? Catch me up. I just saw you the other day. We did your podcast. Now, Jim, everybody, you guys know he's a professional voiceover artist. He's a drummer for fun, which takes the stress way off. But check out uh, Jim McCarthy Voice. Com. He has a podcast called What's Your Problem, which is a great business podcast. He had me on. And then, of course, he's producing podcasts at It's Your Show dot co. Did I get that right, Jim? Did I get all that information correct? I'm just going to hire you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were a great teacher, man. And we got some good feedback from the podcast. So congratulations, man. How many episodes? Uh, that was 122. Nice. You're catching up on us, our little show, 152 episodes. Next big milestone, 250. That's right. Hey, let's get into this because today's guest is so exciting. He's a great guy, fantastic musician. This is long over our, overdue, this conversation. We're going to have in a nice public forum, but hailing from... The city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Our new friend, world class drummer Brian Fraser Moore. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for having me. <laughs> what is happening, Brian? How are you, man? I'm doing great, man. I can't complain. Just a. Uh... Staying, uh, trying to stay warm in supposed sunny California. It's freezing. <laughs> Is it freezing today? <laughs> it's cold. It's been cold. We've been on a cold stretch for a minute. And you got some rain, which is you always need that. Yeah, always. We got we got a lot of rain, but I'm right. not going to say we didn't need it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So listen, as a world class drummer, I'm just going to like let the folks out in podcast land know who you have played with. Just. To name a few, Usher, Patti LaBelle, Teddy P, Backstreet Boys, Justin T, Ciara, Usher, Tony Braxton, Babyface, Christina Aguilera, Janet Jackson, Madonna, Timbaland, Queen Latifah, and now you're with Pink. You've got to be enjoying that. Tell us about that. That is a recent uh, thing. That's a, a, a new shift in the universe. Yes, uh, you said it so perfectly. I mean, it's... First of all, I'm having a, a blast, and right off the gate, I want to say a shout out to um, Mark Schulman, we who, love Mark. Uh, who has really helped me a lot with this trans. Such a great guy, great player, and uh, he's helped me with this transition a lot. So shout out to Mark, man, love you, bro. We love and, Mark. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's my guy, man. And so, um, and so, yeah, the transition has been crazy. I mean, everyone knows, of course, as a music lover. You love all genres of uh, of music, but to now transfer over to your work and, and it's defining your expression and the way you play is a different thing, especially for me coming from the church. So um, I've always had the love for Taylor Hawkins or John Bonham or all of these amazing drummers on the, on the other spectrum killing, you know, all of that stuff. You, yourself, Mark Schumann, I mean, all of these guys that are Kenny Aronoff that, are, that I watch. Um, but now having to sit in that seat it's exciting oh yeah you know, it's like i get to i get to change up and, and discover a new side of me that's yeah. probably already been in there forever you know but um she's great the this camp is great the the crew is everyone's like a family man it's it's, it's amazing we're gearing up for a tour this year so i'm super excited well congratulations and you know mark and i are dear friends and i think he did that gig for like 13 or 14 years i and he used to tell me that 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 uh, i mean it's no secret that la acts when you when you start having all that production and you have all the dancers and all the eye candy he's like man we had rehearsed for a weeks just with the band and then we would add the dancers and then it was another like a month of re that's a lot of that's a lot of focus that's a lot of patience because you know what in nashville we don't have the dancers so 
it was just like, all right, we got this, man. We've been playing these songs for 20 years. Let's go. You know, the only thing that's really going to change is maybe the video content and maybe the, some of the staging, you know, who climbs up where or when, but no dancers. So tell us about that experience. How do you, how do you maintain your focus over a two-month rehearsal? Well, it's crazy. I was just talking to a friend of mine today, and uh, he was he uh, asked me if I was doing Madonna. Madonna was going out, and I said, no, I'm going out with Pete this year. And so uh, Madonna was a situation like that. For th- we, we were rehearsed for three months for, uh, for each tour, so, and it's just like that. You rehearse with her and the band uh, for a month, and then the dancers are rehearsing somewhere else. Then we all come together, and then – the production comes in and we move to a, a, an arena to get a, a real test and that's a, a whole month. So just the, um, the, uh, the strength and endurance you have to have and the enthusiasm to your job is, is like next level for those amounts of time. For sure. Wow. Jim, did you have something you want to say? Yeah. And rehearsals like that three months long, how long are the days? Kind of um, those days, yeah, they were they were they were definitely uh, like a twelve noon to maybe like eight eight nine at night. Sometimes it would go longer, sometimes it would go shorter. But on yeah. the average, putting about eight hours. Yeah, that's a grind. That's a yeah. real grind. Yeah, from the top again, <laughs> and back well, to gotta, one. Well, I got to tell you, uh, for for the rehearsal, I have rehearsals with Pink for three weeks, just really for me to get acclimated, right? And so uh, Paul Merkovitz is the MD, and we, we come in there, 90-minute show. You know, for, of course you know. That's what you do, right? This is yeah. new to me, full energy going on, blah, blah, 90 minutes. Take 20-minute break. All right, from the top. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> right? How right, do you so, do the show all over again? Take a 20-minute break after that. All right, one more time. From the top, we run it like three times. <laughs> yeah, that, wow. yeah, that, that getting, those, had, getting those reps in. that. That, that mind muscle that mind muscle connection and and you know most of the people that uh, you know that watch drummers are like man what a physical instrument it is so physical and we just have to have the whole thing together because our mind has got to be there our body has got to be able to mind body connection so we can express what we think and feel that we what we want to express from our mind so do you have any like um, you know hacks or habits where you're like oh man I got to have like a certain uh, mileage of running a day or I got to get my meditation or what's, what's your thing to keep it all happening together? Yeah, exactly that. I mean, there has to be a point in the day where my, my body is moving so I can get my blood moving, cardio, whatever that may be. Um, and there is a moment where I'm checking in on family because that's a uh, mental for me. As long as I know my family and everybody else is good, I'm free enough to do what I need to do. Um, and then there's also, uh, music time inspiration where i'm just sitting down i guess you can call it meditation whatever that feeling may be for the day i'm just relaxing and listening to that and then i'm, I'm ready to go yeah 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 now now um going back i hate to be that guy take us back to when you started playing but like <laughs> it, we had a similar story you were started playing at five i think i was six or seven and i got some of the basics together and i was excited about it my teacher was really excited but then there was like i want to play with my star wars figures i want to ride my banana bike i want to climb trees so i took a little break from it and then i went got back into it at 11. but what's your story did you get that bug at five and it was just like boom tunnel vision yeah, I think the biggest thing, uh, of course, the natural love, the natural being drawn to it, banging on my mom's encyclopedias. Uh, she got me a got me a drum set. Anyway, uh, the natural love, but I think the church base, um, the obligation for playing at church, for having to play on Tuesday night Bible study, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night service, all day Sunday. I think that mixed with my love kind of gave me the purpose and, and the drive. I, I had to, you know, I, I had to be on the kid and I had to. And so uh, later on, uh, my mom took me to my first concert. I remember this. It was Amy Grant. And, oh, wow. And uh, yeah, I was at the Spectrum. With, this was when it was a Spectrum in Philadelphia. And she took me to that and there was a straight ahead uh, tour where they had the street light. And they had Brown Bannister, the band was playing, and I, I loved them. I always listened to them. And so uh, I saw it, the stage opened up, and I was like, Mom, that's what I want to do. And that's, that's where the inspiration took off from. 
Well, that's got to be great for parents because there's so many kids that like nowadays they have so many options, so many choices. It creates this kind of like they're paralyzed. They don't know what to do if they haven't, you know, been inspired. Like, this is my purpose. This is what I want to do. So for a parent to hear that right at such a young age, she probably was like, I, you know, like, Woo, we got one taken care of. Just so, do you have like brothers and sisters? Two uh, of my brothers, they're twins. Uh, Jerry and James, uh, and no, a bunch of guy sisters, but not none blood related. Wow, yeah, yeah. And so, but did they come to your shows and go like, "That's my brother"? Woo! It's so family, you know. Yeah. Hey, bro, can I have some of these M and M's? I'm like, yes. <laughs> you can. Hey, bro, can I bring? Uh, I got four other friends, man. I didn't tell you about this, but uh, they want. To... <laughs> yeah, and they want pit tickets and then the backstage right. passes. <laughs> You know, little do people realize that the backstage it really isn't all that exciting. It's sweaty cheese and sweaty towels and road cases. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Not, not so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, do you ever look back at this? This is an incredible storied career. What kicked it off for you? When was the – were you starting to tour where you were living in Philadelphia or did you have to move to Los Angeles to get that ball the ball rolling? No, I, I started from Philadelphia. Uh, Johnny uh, Johnny Croom was the first MD that put me on to something major was uh, Aaliyah and Genuine. I was playing for both of them on the same tour, and that propelled to Usher and then auditions for Chris. So it, it, that, all of that happened. I've only been in L.A. for 12 years. Ah. This is 30 years for me um, uh, working in the industry this year. So I didn't move to L.A. for a minute, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations. And I mean, I'm just assuming that like one handshake leads to another if you're constantly doing a good job. Because I, I would almost imagine that if JT, very current, Christina, very current, Janet, Madonna, I mean, the phone can ring at any time for any of these artists. So potentially you might have like six, seven different employers knocking on your door. Hey, do you want to go out this year? <laughs> Yeah, it could, it, you know, it could work out like that, you know, That's, because of the nature of it, you know. Yeah. And now what about these then, television shows? You've been on quite a few television shows. And just recently, was it The Mass Singer or was it the one where Jimmy, where Jimmy Fallon was like singing parts of a song or it was both? Catch me up. Yes. Yes. So we did The Mass Singer season two. That was uh, all pre-records. And then we did uh, Jimmy Fallon. That's my jam. That was uh, season one. Nice. Um, and so that was that was so much fun. I mean, I mean, it's like a it was so much fun. Adam Blackstone was the MD, so he so he made it uh, authentic and and fun. And Jimmy was fun. It, it was great. Yeah, I like I, I like that Jimmy Fallon. I mean, as far as like every every late night host has their their strengths and their things. But I mean, the guy's an imperson. He can do impersonations. He sings. He dances. He's you know he's a great people person. Great interviewer. I yeah. mean, he is top notch, man. He really is. Yeah. He's really so good, you know, yeah. just just being there, seeing like dialogue between him and the contestant and and to see the contestant say something that was unexpected. And he's so good with he's just so good with that. Yeah, you know? he's just he's just he's just made for it. And, you know, the funny thing is, is whenever we do that show, whether it's like once a year, like once every other year we get there, I swear, I, I doubt he remembers really my face or my name but every time he looks at me points at me winks at me it makes me feel like he knows who the hell i am and he's like thanks for being here i mean he just has that charisma with his guests and pretty amazing absolutely and i always yeah, look right, over right. i sorry i always look over at q or q like quest love and i'm just like i eventually want to meet this guy i've been like five feet from the guy like 10 times and i've never met you him. guys have never met never met what well, oh, he's always man. off doing something, you know. He's and then we're in our dressing room down the hallway, and it's just it just okay. it just never happened. But in that hallway, that hallway at Thirty Rock, I did meet Carol Burnett. Jim, did I tell really? you this story? Yeah, one of the queen, no. one of the queens of comedy. So, so, anyways, we just happened. This is like a this is timing. Everything in comedy is timing. And anyways, so I'm in our dressing room, and we're talking about. Um, you know how drummers are j jokesters, and Rich, you really fancy yourself a jokester, but you know only like two out of ten of your jokes land or whatever. So my guys are totally just razzing me today. We go down the hallway, we see Carol Burnett, and she goes, "Oh, you're the drummer." She goes, 
Drummers have the best personalities and are always so funny. I married a drummer. He's the contractor for the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra. And I look around at my band and I go, you suckers. <laughs> drummers are funny. See? Did you ever see, well, the drummer is the one at least in the chart when it goes from singer, guitar player, drummer, and bass player, as far as girls. So, no, but I think it depends on who does the meme, though. Who makes the meme? <laughs> of all the memes that I've seen, it's always been the singer with four girls, the guitar player with a girl on either arm, the drummer with one girl, and the bass player by himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is classic. <laughs> um what about this? Uh, what about the Super Bowls? You did two Super Bowls. Tell me about that that experience because I'm assuming with the quality musicians that you get to play with, and you might not even be able to tell me this, but they're probably really singing. And if for some reason they're not, if it's just like live to tape, the drug the the band's always playing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean that's that's so, a that's a lot of people watching. That's a lot of people watching, for, and and. Just a note, I, this, I've done three Super Bowls. Oh, three! So, Woo! Yeah. Dang. Yeah, so, um, but, you know, each situation is different, man. And I, you already know I can't dive in, into that uh, too much. Oh, no, no. But no, no. Yeah. Each, all of those situations are different. But, you know, whether I say for the drummers, regardless of what you're doing, you still got to play, right? It's just the nature it's just the nature of us and what yeah. we do. So. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you, I tell you a, a quick NFL football related story? Yeah. Brian, do you watch the game? I mean, I'm sure you got, are you a football fan? Not a fan, but I watch. <laughs> Great it's answer. Similar to me, at arm's length kind of fan. I've actually gotten more into it lately. Uh, I've been watching the playoffs as of late. I actually can tell you who's, you know, in the, in the, stats and all this other stuff um but it's very untypical for me so the other night i don't know rich if you if i've told you this i had a tweet that actually uh caught fire went viral oh yeah and I, yeah i the the kicker for the um oh, who was it uh one of the teams he missed three in a row he missed three no no yeah, he missed three field goal attempts in a row uh oh consecutively so the graphic he was about to make his fourth and the graphic on the bottom pops up and it says four consecutive missed field goal attempts. And I'm like, what are the graphics team for ESPN calling him out ahead of time? So I went back and, and recorded the video and I'm like, put it up on Twitter. And I'm like, did anybody else see this? He only made three uh, field goal attempts, but they're saying this is uh, he's got four consecutive missed field goal attempts. I thought I was like, you know, caught like a conspiracy in action. Right. I'm going, <laughs> I got the, they, they know this is rigged, you know? And then all of a sudden it was because he missed the previous games, the last field goal and the previous game that they played the week before that was the fourth one. Oh, oh wow. Wow. And I mean, this thing, I mean, it's still going, it's, it's still get, I'm still getting notifications on my Twitter, 60 some odd thousand views of this video. I mean, Jeez. retweets. And I've never had that happen to me before. See anything, but potentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, but anything potentially incorrect or somewhat, you know, crazy or, you know, controversial is going to get those results. To, to, to their credit, a majority of the people were like, yeah, man, it was from another game. No big deal. And then, you, of course, you get the guys that have like 30 followers. They're like, you're an idiot. What a <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, I, and I just replied, I'm going, yeah, you know, uh, I'm a noob. <laughs> Guilty. Uh, didn't know. But, so, you know. But, but, the, but, but the, we have to deal with the trolls. So, like, Brian, you got a strong online presence. I can't imagine you getting trolled so much because you're so great at what you do. What are they going to say? They're not going to say uh, you suck because you are so far from sucking. It's like, so do you have trolls? What do what do they uh, focus on? I do, man, and that's, that's such an interesting thing. I mean, the majority of my my fan base are supportive, yeah, which I appreciate and I love all of them. But I do have a certain percentage that troll, and it's crazy. It used to bother me. Uh, I know this one guy. I'm not gonna say his name, or maybe I'll see his name. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, so this one guy, he's just on my back, just about everything that I'm doing. And uh, you know what? I had to get to a place where I just uh, tuned it out, just to be honest, because they're gonna keep going, and I'm never gonna stop. 
So, uh, I mean, what, what, there's nothing else to do. No, you uh, just got to keep moving forward and realize, hey, man, you know, maybe get out of your mom's basement every once in a while, you know? Right. Ouch. Right. Yeah, maybe... Maybe pay your taxes this year. Some do something different. You know? Oh yeah, did did and, you? Uh, what are you doing again? Did you guys see the three the three uh, the three rules for success that Eddie Murphy said at the Golden Globes? I missed it. It was it was a it was a brave joke. Um, it was basically he was accepting an award and he basically said, "I there's three rules for success in Hollywood. First, and he you know he it was very dramatic the way he paced everything out." Everything in comedy is timing. He was talking about pay your taxes, mind your business, and keep your Will Smith's wife's name out of your mouth. And he just landed that joke like it was, you know, like just landing on the moon, man. And people were just like stunned but also putting their hands together like he did it. He can get away with it, you know? Yeah, Yeah, he can. (laughs) <laughs> now now uh now jim was was checking out your website and because jim is like you know he's an entrepreneur i'm an entrepreneur you're a very serious entrepreneur and you look at some drummers websites and it's it's very simple it's like this is what i look like this is what i sound like in the studio here's a one live video of me playing maybe they teach some lessons you go to bfmworld.com and you could learn all about, you know, your background, just nice bio, and then there's your gear stuff. But then, hey, I do consultations, I do webinars, I do clinics, I do lessons, I have signature products, I got a loop package, I could do sessions, you know, in Los Angeles, or I could do sessions from my studio, your studio. You got clothing, you got a clothing line. Like, this is all fantastic stuff. Have you always been a natural at that kind of a thing, or was it later in life you're like, hey, man, I got an amazing platform and I could probably be capitalizing just a little bit more on this. Yeah, I think it was more of that. I, I tend to think I always had uh, thought more business and more global, even though um, I had a talent in one, one area. Um, but it, there was a time, there was a, there was some time in my, I think BFM world essentially is about almost 10 years old. So you can do the math, but there was a click there that was like, hold on, wait a minute. You know, I see people like you. I see people like like Mark, and I see people like that are that are like that are spreading out. It's not just one thing. And I'm like, oh man, you know what? This thing is way bigger. And and this is good. Don't get me wrong. I'm having a great time, able to make some good money. But God, Lee, what else could I possibly do if I put? the same energy into it you know yeah no no i love it and it's a it's a grand grand success and i love yeah. your your activity on on instagram you you have some like positive takeaway memes like little nugget wisdom i think you even call them wisdom nuggets or what are they they're gems uh, uh, be a, yeah be a, gems. Yep. yeah 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 and those, yeah. And those are I, great I like, I like that man i mean most of the time i'm talking to myself but i'm glad that uh <laughs> that other people until you just meet that sometimes at the top of the day, just a thought or just something different in the world that you're in, you know? Yeah. Now, you now find the you, one joy. Th- sure. Yeah. Sure, man. And, um, these consultations that you do, we, we both do, do those for the most part. Is it, is it drummers or will you get some other instrumentalists slash songwriters? They're like, Hey man, you got some insights into this crazy business. It seems like the wild west. Are there any rules? I'm in Idaho. What do I do? Like, like what does that look like for someone? How does that work? If somebody wants to book one? Absolutely. So the, it, it, it first started as a consultation because I wanted to offer people a little more insight on how they can move a little better, you know, how the industry is and the best ways to, to move forward. Right. And so then it ran into that thing. You would have one person that was like, yo, I'm a, I'm a producer and how do I such and such, or I'm a vocalist or songwriter. And so then that's, that's when I split it up to lessons, like for all of the drummers that are inquiring about um, things that you need and tools that you need, that'll be that. And consultations I'll leave open. It could be a flute player. It could be a tuba player. It could be a producer. It could be a poet. It can be anything because I believe that uh, giving them the insight on this business is pretty general till you till you get to the specifics. 
Yeah. Well, I'm sure that's very, very helpful. And, you know, we're so in it. We're so close to it that sometimes, you know, we just need to be reminded that that uh, that that you are an expert. I think that a lot of drummers in the world would just be so happy to go pick any name on this resume and go, yeah, you know, I did uh, a couple years with Patty LaBelle. It was amazing. But you have mm -hmm. this mess. So you're so close to it. To it, you, oh, you, I'm sure you can't see because the forest is like right here. How impactful mm -hmm. just your words would be for someone. I mean, simple, something as simple as even just telling someone, you're going to have to leave Idaho. You're going to have to go move to one of three cities. And as soon as you get there, you got to start shaking hands and get out. And just just those two nuggets of wisdom is worth the price of admission. Yeah, get used to the taste of dirt. Get used to the taste of Absolutely. what, buddy? Dirt. Eat your dirt. Oh yeah, or is it you're eating crow? You sometimes you have to take a step yeah. back to take a step forward, right? Absolutely. I love. I love that whole process of of someone inquiring that lives in. The, the second corner of the earth somewhere and they say, Hey man, I, and I believe them. They, they have the, they have the, the, the desire and they have the talent and they're amazing. And it's like, bro, you, you have to change locations. You do, you do realize that, right? Like and for, for where you want to go, for what you want to get out of it in the hands that you want to connect with it. Yeah. All of these people, you, you got to go get it. You know? Yeah. That's scary information to receive. I was on the receiving end of that. I went to broadcasting school back in the day. And one of the guys who just didn't mince words, didn't hold back, he says, look, a lot of you guys aren't going to really make it in the industry because you're not going to be willing to move around the country. That's part of it. And yeah. I'm like, and you okay. Know, and my twist, we the eyes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And and because of the social media area and, and, and all of this uh, Instagram and everything that we have now, now the consultations are taking a new turn because there is awareness that you can draw to yourself, uh, marketing it a certain way through social media because that's where all the eyes are. But you have, you have to be strategic in it. You don't just want to showcase all of your chops in the basement and, 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 and get a film producer that comes across your page and, and be scared because that's all that they see. If, yeah. if you want to promote the strongest things you do, promote all the strongest things that you do. Country, pop, rock, brushes, whatever it may be. And now you're using it strategically. Yeah. Well, it's, it, a lot of them, the Instagram drummers are kind of like uh, percussive masturbating, uh, dare I say. <laughs> if, they're, if they're in their you know, basement or something like that, you could see uh, there are some guys that, you know, constantly have a camera on them that are playing on cruise ships or other gigs and things of that nature. I like to watch those uh, those videos a lot more because there's there's validation, there's credibility to what they do. They're actually they're out there working and they're good. You know, so if anybody were to hire them, they know that they've got the chops. They they could play with other, other musicians. They've been in situations that either recording or live that they're able to uh, pull their weight, you know. Some of these, I think you called them uh, early on, Rich. I think you said that there was circus drumming. The uh, hey, let me show you how fast I can go down the toms. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and all that kind of stuff. Jim, like, yeah, that's great. You know, Jim, you're scary today. You are. You're. You're. You're just like you're like a fire breathing dragon right into the. You're blowing the mic on the Mac, man. Hello. Um, no, I love it. I I love it. And all that stuff is great. And you know what? If I was a, I was smart, I would get with well, some of these young guard kids that are in their 20s and say, what is that hand and foot combination that you're doing is so blurred and so fast. I need it in my bag of tricks. But at the same time, like if I'm going to double down on my Instagram and post even more, I the best thing that I could probably do is just play songs and other genres because... I'm in a lane where people think that I am a one trick pony. Like I, Absolutely. I can only play country music. Now there's a whole legacy and a history there that is so special. And so it would be fine to just be a two different drummers, country and Western, but, but there's mm -hmm. so much other stuff that, that is, that is out there. So for me, um, I think the job ahead of me is I want to get some of those. Uh, I want, I need some gospel chops, man. I, you know, but I, I need some gospel chops in the back pocket, man. 
So I want to get that together, and then I'm just going to post. Jim's got an idea. He wants me to, to do, like, songs that influence me. So, you know, you're posting. Mm. It, would be, it would be Police. It would be, um, you know, Alex Van Halen. You know, But it's uh, it's interesting because if you we spend all the time just filming ourselves in our studios, there isn't necessarily a direct ROI on our effort. It's like, hey, if I post two vid- two high quality videos a day, I'm going to get an amazing gig. So I don't know what kids are doing. They're just, I guess they might want to get endorsements or like, look at me. I want a girlfriend. But um, I'm glad that you and I went out there and played with real people in real time. Right. <laughs> I'm so thankful for that. I mean, yeah. I, I talk about that all the time. I, I think it's nothing like that. Just yeah. the training and, 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 uh, the, the listening to albums, right? Not being able to see the person, but being able to hear them. It's like figuring out what yeah. you're listening to more of the feel, how, how their, their feel rather than the drum feels or, um, but yeah, I, it's nothing like that day. Uh, we, we grew up in the, in a great era. We sure did, man. And it, what was another yeah. show that I saw you on recently? Oh, how was the rock and roll hall of fame? And like, everybody was there, Dolly, every, but you backed up a lot of folks. Tell us about that experience. It was, uh, man, it was so much fun, man. Uh, once again, Adam Blackstone was the MD and, uh, uh, the band was incredible. We got to play with, uh, Lionel Richie. Oh yeah. And we got to play with, uh, the Eurythmics, which was insane. I love Andy Lennox, man. She, <laughs> she's such a sweetheart. She gave, she gave us all gifts, like, after that performance. She gave really? us, like, this candle and this handwritten card for everybody in the band. So That's classy. Shout out, shout out to Andy. She's such a uh, sweetheart. And uh, we, uh, Sarah Barellas, I think we played with. And, uh, yeah, it, it was incredible, man. I, yeah. I love it. And, and Pink was there. She was there. At the, uh, she was performing with someone else but it was, that, it was great to see all yeah didn't the zach too. brown band uh back her up maybe and, and yeah. dolly yeah yeah crazy yeah. man crazy Amazing well that's another time. another feather in your back pocket man incredible oh uh, man it was uh, i had a i had a blast i really enjoyed the uh, rock and roll hall of fame a lot and just seeing all the other bands and legends that was there i was like a kid man i was walking up to kids and like let me see let me see oh, this is crazy. <laughs> well you know <laughs> It's it's that brother it's that 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 drum brother fraternity thing that we have you know I remember meeting Trevor yeah. Lawrence like twelve years ago on like a People's Choice Award thing or something and like yeah. I was like scoping on his kit and he's like oh I remember checking out your kid and then we had to do like a DW um, like a promotional video one day and we kind of like got friendly and kept in touch and so then when I had him on the podcast it was just like a cool reunion man but yeah yeah um, that's my mm-hmm. guy Trevor shout out to him God what a nice nice player i mean plays everything yeah he's like one yourself. of those guys like yourself <laughs> man now looking back at all this you think you got a book in you are you a guy the type of guy that's going to get a co-author and go like let me tell you a story yeah man I, um been in the works already the book and the documentary all um, right. so i've been filming this stuff yeah i've been filming this stuff since I was out with Justin, I think, on the Man of the Woods. So I started filming back then and just about my life and gathering footage and getting people for interviews. So documentary, yes. Book, yes. Absolutely. Uh, talking about my life uh, to be a, the, to be an inspiration, you know what I mean, As, uh, from where I come from, the things I, I've seen, the inspirations I've had, like, like all of you guys and um just that and then also the record is almost done i'm almost finished the record as well so oh, you got a solo record coming out yeah uh, now is there a lot of singers or is it going to be more instrumental like so this is interesting so the direction of my record i, I had to think about this for a while because i didn't just want to put no record out sounding like i was just doing a drum clinic or anything like that right i really wanted to let people into my world so i went back to my inspirations uh, of of periods in my time where I first heard Chick Corea, when I first heard Vinny Caliuta, when I first heard the Winans, when I first heard Cornelia, Abraham Laboriel Sr., when when all of these times, so that my record is a journey through my time and all the songs are connected and there are inspirations and there's dialogue to explain what's happening. Half half has singing, half is instrumental. All right, man. That's going to be a killer record. So sometime this year, perhaps? 
Yeah, sometimes you know, taking my time. I, I was in a rush at one point because I was trying to get in a uh, deadlines for Grammys, and then uh, I said, "Nah, you know what? I'm gonna take my time." I'm, my guy said, "Brian, take your time with this one." Said, yeah, all right, all right. That's amazing. So, so uh, koinonia, 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 yeah. which means doesn't it mean like community or brotherhood or. Yes, I think it's like a fellowship of brotherhood, something like that. That was uh, Alex Acuna, right? Playing drums? Yes, they, that was the band from the Winans for, for all the churchgoers. They were on all the Winans records. Bill Maxwell, Alex Acuna, Hadley Hopkins Smith on guitar, uh, Abraham Laboriel Sr. On, on, on bass. That, I grew up on that. Man, Alex... <laughs> anything he touches turns to gold i mean he could just be he could just play with like a folkloric person in that exact style and nail it or he could take liberties or you know he's mixing the different cultures but then he could just sit down on a kit and just oh you want straight ahead good you want my song go you want my uh, i'm gonna play some hip-hop anything anything very underrated very underrated and uh absolutely yeah I was kind of breaking he's a, he's bread one night. Legend. He's a legend. I was breaking bread kind of one night with all with after a drum clinic in Nashville, and he was there, and uh, just you know to hug him and you know shake his hand and just it was wow. And I and I think he's he doesn't take Western medicine like he's very like spiritual like like he, if he has a headache he will not take Tylenol. He just lets the body wow, heal itself, nice. which okay. is which is crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How's that working out for him? I. <laughs> I don't know. He's still. I mean, he's in his seventies. He's still doing it. So, you know, if I got a headache, I'm going straight for the Advil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so who were the favorite drummers yeah. growing up? Who were the? Who was the? Who were the cats, man? That were okay, so, posters on your wall. So, absolutely. So, growing up, I, of course, I grew up in church. So, um, some some of my heroes that uh, maybe not so many of the, much of the masses may know. But uh, Garfield Williams was was one of my heroes. Um, Joel Smith was one of my heroes. Played with the Hawkins, um, and so then uh, Spike Anthony McRae who played with the Hawkins. So then it moved on. Little John introduced me to uh, uh, John Petitucci on the corner record. I don't know if you uh, remember this right. Oh yeah, yeah. Was, yeah there's the picture with the egg creams in the back. Yes, yes. So John introduced me to that, and that's when I first heard uh, Vinnie Caliuta. And it changed, you know, I'm from the church. We, you know, we just playing everything, but it honed all of that into some musicality and, and it, cha it completely changed my life. So he became a hero. And then from there, I, I got a uh, win of uh, Dave Weckl. So his drum sounds, just the way his tones were, his drum tuning, his triggering, was a huge inspiration uh, for me a lot on, on the master plan record when him and Vinny was going back and forth. And uh, so, yeah, those were my heroes after church. And then it just opened up. The more I started working, that's when I started learning about every, of course I knew Gerald Hayward. I knew Teddy Campbell. These are all like my guys from back home. We, we'd be at the same church conventions, you know, and stuff like that. But then it started opening up, you know. I started hearing um, um, Ricky Lawson, Jonathan wow. Moffitt, you know what I'm saying, Billy Cobham. When I I was so late to Billy Cobham, it it almost did. I almost didn't recover when I heard that. I was like, "What in the world?" John Bonham. Then it starts to open up. So I'm I'm still currently having inspirations every day that I'm discovering. Yeah, you know, I remember that era so vividly the on the corner era um it was like the sound of that era was like a really sharp and beautiful musical sounding crashes but not too big really kind of a dry bell the tiny 10 inch tom tom splash or two right low thuddy toms cracking piccolo snare drum you put that all together it, that was like that sound for playing that music like Frank and Bali, the electric band, all that stuff. You know, jo yes. Joel Rosenblatt was kind of, Bissonette kind of could get that sound. Uh, Sonny Emery, because, man, I, I did yeah. a lot of transcribing of that stuff, man. It's, okay. in, it's in there okay. somewhere, you know? Okay. Yeah, you explained it perfectly. That's that's exactly 
I can I can feel it as you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> amazing, amazing period. Um and uh Jim, what uh, what do you what what do you what's your thing? I know you 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 did this. I did? Yeah, you want like well, no, I, I, I have, a, I've always got a question, <laughs> Bruce. Really. Um, what's your uh, like Instagram or TikTok uh, recent indulgence or uh, guilty pleasure as of late? Oh God, this whole boxing thing. I'm 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 one of those guys that get on Instagram and look for all of the top knockouts in boxing. I dive into this whole like crazy you MMA. Like, yeah, MMA. Aren't they fascinating? I love MMA, dude. Just bring on the blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's always the compilations that, that are fun to watch, the, like top 10 knockouts of 2022. Yes. They're yes, awesome. Absolutely. I love like, those. I'm, and it gets I'm me thinking. I'm like, you know, I, I really need to get back into MMA, like doing it. Yes. <laughs> Which, you know, you, and then I remember that I, I never really did. You know. Oh, I was about to say. I was like, wait you a know. minute, you did <laughs> Oh yeah, he was on the floor all the time. Um Yeah. Just, <laughs> I, I cleaned the map. Yeah, but you know what? We watch that on the bus, the guys, man. It kind of feeds our inner, like, it's just get out some aggression. We're like, get him! Get him! Oh, but actually, we just kind of, like, turn away a lot. We're just like, oh, it's like a horror film. It's like, oh. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, usually when they're, like, in some sort of grapple, and they got the guy's arm, like, freaking wrapped around like a pretzel. And he's not tapping yes. out. He's like, I'm going to freaking break your arm. I'm gonna, okay. <laughs> and you're like, no, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> is his bone sticking out? What was that one with Joe Rogan where it's like a, a meme now where he's like, oh. I think that was one of them where he, he uh, somebody like did a compound fracture. And it just, Ooh. everyone was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're, they're so much fun to watch. Joe Rogan. I was thinking more like, like the, the Instagram drummers. I, I just started looking them up. And my goodness, the amount of followers some of these guys have, and you never heard of them, you know, mm. some of these, you know, the Instagram guys and stuff like that. Um, it's just, it, it's mind blowing to me. I mean, they're actually monetizing uh, their lives by doing what they do, you know? Yeah. So no. You guys and need to be doing more of that. You know, I, you know, Jim, I hear this thing all the time, right? And you, you're absolutely right. But I'm just like, I don't know if I have it in me. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know if I have the time, you know what I'm saying, to devote to that. Yeah. But I do agree that I, I should some kind of way be doing it, but I just don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you need to just film it and then have somebody else do it for you. There you go. There you yeah. go. Well, and you've been busy, man. You, you've you got another uh, loop package with Yurt Rock. We both have a loop package with Yurt. And yours is killer, man. So for those composers, film and TV composers, songwriters, artists, bands, you want to have a great-sounding drummer, a place great-sounding drums with grooves that have, you know, are in that tempo range and that feel range that are going to be useful for you. you got a great, great package there at Yurt Rock. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you, brother. Congratulations to you, too. Well, thanks, man. I guess there's, you know, some bedroom composers out there that are just like, let's just take this loop that Rich, yeah. you know, or Brian recorded. We just pop it on the grid, and then, you know, it's good. Hey, it works, hopefully. Totally. <laughs> are you still doing your kind of clothing line thing? No, so I've been I've been off of that for a minute. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's kind of a machine that kind of rolls by itself at, at this point, So, but I haven't created any new um product or anything lately i think i have like 980 some pieces of product on there so i just let it sit for a second yeah well, that's but, uh, lately i've been uh i've been doing films bro it's really it's really tripping me out like uh i did a film uh this film called two distant strangers and it, it actually won an oscar it was an independent film and uh, it was kind of once again, always trying to learn and 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 soak up more. But it's like scoring you. You, I'm sure you've done this a million times. But it's scoring moods now. It's like sending you clips and 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 you pulling out the energy or the feel, being more connected to the scenes or what's happening. So, right. Uh, did, yeah, I did a did that movie. I did Lao Lao Crocodile, the animated movie that just came out. And then people um, are just sending the files to your studio. Or you yeah, so they'll they'll send me the uh you, you know send the code on top of the video you know how it is and uh and then you you cut to it I throw that in my doll and I uh, 
cut to it and send it back. And, you know, Unbelievable. Move. Unbelievable the like, era that we're in. I know, right? Isn't it crazy? No, it's, I really... The fun part is... The fun part is talking to the producer on the phone, you know, because that's when you get, now, this person is in the cab and they're contemplating killing their wife. They've been, they've taught, it's like so crazy. Like you have He's, to be. A lot of times. I want you on that floor, Tom, the whole time. And then when he breaks out the knife, I want you to go to the ice bell. <laughs> yes. Yes. Shout out to, um. Antonio Sanchez, who has been a lot of my inspiration. Uh, well, that, yeah, so. I mean, so Jim Antonio is a is like a very progressive jazz drummer that basically scored the entire Birdman uh, soundtrack. It was almost all drums until the end. It got a little symphonic, and then there was this controversy where they weren't going to let him be eligible to win the Academy Award because. Because it was all drums. It's like really splitting hairs there. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think. I think he was nominated for okay. best score, you know, as a composer. But it was mostly. Um, Im, I think he was improv. He was improvising based on the mood of the scene. And I, I don't know. I so maybe we'll, we'll get some comments and below if you guys know the exact story. But yeah, he's been doing a lot of composing from the drums. He is, he is so good, bro. He's my hero. He I is. have so many heroes. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody's got their gift, you know, of something that they do yeah. really, really, really well, and we can inspire each other. Are you drawing inspiration from other ways? Like, what are some things? You, are are you a reader, or do you like watching documentaries, or what's your thing? I'm big on documentaries. Um, uh, I, I love to learn and, and see the story. I get inspired by other people's story. Yeah. Um, so see what they went through, see how they conquer, to see that takeover mentality that, that they snapped into at, at some point. Uh, so I really, I'm a documentary guy. I don't read much. I, I have a record player upstairs. I listen to old records. Um, I, I listen, let me see, uh, Housework. My wife is an amazing interior uh, decorator. Nice. So uh, I cross over into that lane, like really uh, drywall and all of this nice. laying carpet and stuff yeah. like that. So, you do any uh, uh, electrical or HVAC or anything like that? No, no, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim's got his side hustle is he's got an electrical company, electrical and lighting company specializing in LED lighting, which is basically the whole world is going LED, you know? Yeah, don't tell my wife that. Yeah, does, does she like the, uh, she likes the filaments? Oh, my God, all Old of school. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And condescent. Is she like, wait, does she like incandescent or Edison bulbs? There's a difference. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not telling you. You guys will never meet ever again, ever in life. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for Edison, man. Can you imagine how dark the world would be? And we, you know, it, it would be it, it. That dude changed the world. Did he, or was it Tesla? I'm just saying. The band Tesla. <laughs> sorry, a dad you know, joke. No, um, the car. We've been really practicing our uh, dad jokes. Home Depot theme. Um, oh my god! <laughs> if you want, if Rich, Rich was recently on my podcast, and we I, I tried a new feature out called the Dad Joke Challenge, and uh, yeah, it was three or five dad jokes, and they all completely. Uh, Rich sitting across from me, he did not crack a smile. If that, <laughs> and that's hard to believe as that is. And I'm was, like, hey, you know, ha -ha. and he's like, mm -mm. it was hard. <laughs> it was hard, Jim, because I hate people leaving people out in the cold, you know, because drummers were like natural accompanists. So if somebody's suffering, you know, we want to help you out. You know, we're looking out for you, you know. If, if yeah. you go to at Jim McCarthy VOS on my Instagram, that is at Jim McCarthy VOS. Jim McCarthy VOS at on Instagram. Uh, a little plug there. Uh, you'll be able to see a little. Video. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is there. So, hey, Brian, with you looking back on all these years, man, is there is there like uh, some memories that are like so in, where it's like, oh, my God, that was one of the most incredible recording sessions ever. Or that was one of the most incredible gigs because they do as as high level as they are. It is a job and they can start to run into each other. And we are 
forgetting things, you know, it's like I need my mm-hmm. Prevagen. Uh, but is, is there some mm-hmm. things that like, re- like kind of really stick out over the years? Yeah. I mean, I, I would have to say on the performance side, um, just uh, playing with certain artists. I, first of all, playing with artists um, that have music in the era that I grew up in. So like that would be like um, Janet Jackson or, or Babyface, um, some uh, artists like that. Being able to be on stage with them and they recognize me, uh, especially in my hometown, in front of my mom and dad and my, my kids and then everybody, man. Number one has to be the, uh, the biggest moment that I can imagine uh, to make my family proud. Um, also, let me say, uh, playing, there was a moment playing at the uh, White House uh, for the Obama, uh, some Obama party that he was having there and realizing, you know, we're set up on the stage and I see this podium. I'm, I'm drums right here and I see this podium right there and I'm like, okay, yeah, I, no, that's a podium. I see it, but that's, nah, he's not going to. No, he's not going to be that close to me. No, no. So the show starts and he comes out and does like a 10 minute speech and he's right there and I'm right in the shot the whole time. And I'm just like, <laughs> like he's really going to stand there. Yeah. Man, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> so that I would was, love to interview him. <clears throat> yeah. You were in uh, the shot that, the whole time. I was in the shot the whole 10 minutes. You can, you can pull it up on Google. And it starts, the performance starts, and he comes out and speaks. And there's Adam Blackstone on this side, and there's me on this side, and then there's him right in the middle. Incredible. I enjoy hearing these stories because all the people we talk to, even Rich, when I asked them this, like all the different experiences you you guys get to experience playing with the people that you play with, there's like a meh factor to it. You know, it becomes – you know, day in and day out, you, you just kind of get used to it. You realize that they put their, you know, pants on one leg at a time, but when they do, they make gold records. <laughs> and when you, what was, I mean, you ever like, you know, you mentioned Janet Jackson, you mentioned Babyface, you mentioned Barack Obama, but I mean, in the beginning, were you like, oh my God, you know what that is? You know what I mean? Just like, you see who we're playing with, dude? You know, and I mean, not Absolutely. to get wormy or anything, but I mean, I, I, yeah, I was even I've, telling when we talked to Rich, and he was in the One O'Clock Lab Band, which is a I would imagine a very high accolade if you're in the collegiate level of playing, you know, to achieve that level. And you're like, eh, absolutely, you know, I did it. But I'm like, at yeah. the time, you have to be. This is amazing. Well, yeah, but absolutely. it was like, it was like uh, you know, thirty years ago, Jim. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> still, I mean, you know, I did that. You know, I mean, that's true. <clears throat> That's yeah. true. I attended you know. the. I was at the opening of a brothel once. I mean, I could say that. Oh my God! Don't bat him, bat him, bat him. It was a ra- it was a radio thing, but uh, and my wife was there. She actually asked the best questions on the morning show that we were uh, uh, promoting at the time. Uh, she had a couple of beers in her, and she and she just they just let her take over the interview because she was asking really good questions to the girls, the workers there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, they have a trade. It was funny on the way. On the way there, she's asking me, you think they're going to talk to me? You think they're going to be nice? You think they'll actually walk around naked? And I'm like, you think if I knew the questions, the answers to any of these questions, it might bother you in the least? Because I don't know. I've never been to one of these things. That's a cr- Jim, you are nuts. True well, Jim, story. Jim's a family man. What? what is, you, you, how many kids do you have? Yeah, what, what's, what, are they in the music? Uh, so, yeah. So, I have three children. Uh, uh, Shantice is my daughter. She just got married uh, wow. a couple years ago. Um, so she has a daughter, uh, Kylie. So I'm a grandpa. All right. And right. then, uh, and then I had my, uh, my son, Christopher was well, Shantice is 20, uh, 28. Lord Jesus. Why did I even start the ages? Okay. And then my, <laughs> my son, Christopher, uh, he's the, my middle son. He's into music. So he's a keyboard player, vocalist, very super, super, uh, talented. And then there's my youngest son, Nazi, who's into uh, fashion. He's more into a fashion model. Uh, type of kid, very intelligent, very smart, and he's twenty three, something like that. So. All right, so yeah, that's yeah. that's incredible. Like, hey, let's watch TV tonight. Grandpa's playing with Pink. <laughs> I mean, you're probably the coolest grandpa I ever met in my life, man. I've never even thought of that. Thank you, Ritz. That well, was incredible. Well, look at, we got this. We got this white 
you know, know. thing coming in. And my girlfriend thinks that she's like, she goes, that facial hair takes you up several numbers. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, I guess I got to keep it, but it's it's gray. I was like, I, I kind of want to shave it, you know, or dye it or something, but the dye is hard. It doesn't really work. It only lasts a day. No, you know, no, and, I'm not that high maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and it's like once it grows in gray and you do the color thing, everybody knows. Everybody it's so easy to Everybody knows. Everybody oh, knows. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. They're going to rip me apart it. if they see me. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm doing something. I'm letting my hair grow in for a change. I usually have a bald head. But, nice, Jim. But it's, it's not bad, problem. buddy. I, I, yeah. I think I, I may do the Bernie Madoff and just slick it back. The Benjamin Franklin look with the uh, mullet. But, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, you need a wig and a gavel. Hey, let's do the uh, let's do the fast five. Sometimes we do the random question okay. of the day, but these are just five fast questions. Favorite okay. food? Fish. All right. Like sushi or any fish? Any fish. Sushi, any fish. Any. Okay, okay. Favorite color? Black. All right, yeah. me too. As you Favorite, see, I wear black all the time. I make our black tea every day. Change the jacket. <laughs> uh, favorite song? Is that possible? Favorite song? Jesus, I don't know if that's possible. but Yeah, I know. Uh, Leader of the band. Yeah. I What's mean, one that just keeps yeah. coming back in all the eras of your life? You just keep revisiting it. It just seems magical okay. to you. Okay. I'll tell you, but you're never going to believe it. I the Eye of the Tiger. Nice! That's one of my favorite. Bunk, bunk, bunk. One arm no push matter, up. <sighs> yeah, no matter how many times I hear it or whatever, it puts me in this mode. It's, it's like great. You that know? is such a great thing. We have that in common. I love that. Favorite drink. I never heard of it. Favorite drink? I would say an apple martini in a, in, a, in a regular glass, not a martini glass. Oh, yeah, because the martini glass just makes it so pompous. Yes, absolutely. You know, pinky's <laughs> out. Pinky's out. I love that. An apple martini. All right. And favorite movie? Favorite movie of all time is probably, I would say, Top Gun. Now, I'm, I'm a huge Top Gun fan, but the second one, Maverick, was insane. I enjoyed oh, it. The writing... How they tied everything in. It was it was incredible. I enjoyed it, it very was, much as well. It was such yeah. a like a timely movie. There was nothing it was just a fun movie. Yeah. You left the I you left the it. movie to be like it was like going to the movies in the eighties. You just felt good about America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It really was pure entertainment. That Tom Cruise, and he does not age. I don't know what he's doing. He's doing stem cells. He's doing HGH. He's got a trainer. He's got a nutritionist. The, it looks. He looks amazing. He looks incredible. And you know what? You know what I really valued about that Ma uh, Maverick movie uh, that I saw in the interview is that all of those scenes in the fighter jet were real scenes like yeah. the th the amount of puke they said was on the set from them going up like that they said it was i have so much respect for them wow yeah i think they're, they're, they're literal gopros they were shooting a, a, a you know multi-million dollar movie with gopros that's crazy <laughs> yeah so they can get the actor's reaction to like the g-force yeah actually when, yeah when Miles, one of the scenes with Miles Teller, his character, when they actually uh, come out of the, uh, I don't know, one of the things, they had to come over the hump or the ridge, he actually had didn't have his belt tight enough. You see him pop out of the seat, and they left it in the movie. And nice. He's like, wow. yeah, I, didn't I don't have my belt on tight enough. So man. Used it. man, that you Miles know? Teller, man, he's played a drummer, he's played a boxer, he's played superheroes, he's played mob guys, he's played a pilots he's really gotten around he's great yeah yeah he's making at least a hundred bucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so brian you're so inspirational man when i'm in la i'm gonna like knock on your door i'm gonna take a lesson we're gonna do a hang we're gonna get some fish we're gonna Whoa. get an apple we're gonna get an apple martini and a solo cup um it's yeah. gonna be, you know we'll do it backyard style um yeah. but you're, you're just so inspiring such a such a shining light of positivity you know, big inspiration, highly accomplished, and you're so grateful and humble, and uh, it's it's a great thing to say. What's next for you, man? What's next for you? What's besides the doc and the uh, the book and the solo record? 
this invention that me and my wife keep uh, brainstorming over because we watch Shark Tank every day. So we're on to the next uh, invention that's uh, going to take us to the $100 million mark. And I like gonna, that. We're going to disappear. Can you, do, can, you do your, uh, can you do your Shark Tank pitch, pitch for us? Or, uh, you can be hey, hey, Sharks. Hey, sh- <laughs> you got to say that. Hey, Sharks. Are you guys ready to get down and dirty with the- <laughs> Yeah. They they probably prep you big time on like how to make it Hollywood, you know? Oh yeah. Exactly. You know, uh, I'm not really big into getting dirty, so uh for those reasons I'm <laughs> Well, you know what's really funny, Brian? I, I think that if anybody can do it, it's gonna be you. You've got the laser focus, man. You got a million dollar smile, it's gonna happen. Yeah, Are yeah. you're a pearl artist, Brian? Yes, sir. You ever get out to Nashville to the HQ? Not yet. Yeah, yeah. Sure They're all here on Me- Metroplex yeah. Boulevard or Metroplex Drive in Nashville. Yeah, it's like, like it's like ten miles from here. Crazy, man. Well, okay. there's so okay. much that we could talk about. Maybe there's a part two, but I really appreciate your time and all these wisdom nuggets. And keep keep Thank doing you. your thing. Have fun with paint. Keep changing the world, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. You're a hero. Tell, tell Pink we said hello. Like, yeah, tell hey, Pink we said hello. I she, will. Pleasure he, meeting you too, Joe. YouTuber. She is a she is a badass. Thank you so much, Brian. That's uh, uh, bfmworld.com. Follow him on the socials. Jim, as always, jimmccarthyvoiceovers.com. We sure appreciate your time and talent. And to all you listeners out there, be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. Leave us a five-star rating. And I'll say what Jim says. If you can't leave me a five-star rating, tell me why, and I'll do what I need to do to get five stars out of you. Guys, appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.